Today we're going to draw a snow scene in which we make the paper work for us. We don't have to do too much work ourselves. Let's start one third of the way down from the top left, swing a line way in here, and curve it right back out a little bit below the other third. Now let's uh, put in a line for a hill here, swinging it up across the picture like that. And let's make a roadway curve right back over the brink of that hill. So swing it out, back in, and out again to get a graceful compound curve. Now let's draw a building back here in the distance. And we'll start with a square, place it right on the brink of this hill like this. And we'll turn it into a cube by adding third dimension. Now we'll put the triangular shape on top of that and uh, place a roof over it. But let's cover that roof with snow so that you make the eaves very thick and round it off like that. So it has quite a marshmallow topping to it. Now let's draw another rectangular shape over here. Bring it down that slope. Add another roof over here with that thick blanket of snow piled on it. Well, now I think perhaps we better put in a hill way up back here and just carry it on across the picture like that. We ought to get a few tracks into this snow. So uh, think of those as having a slight irregularity to them and a sort of a softness. So you can wiggle them a little as you bring them down to the foreground like this. And let's put in still another pair of tracks that sort of crisscross over them, that make a graceful design. As if a sleigh had come down that road and then gone back up. By the way, we ought to soften the edge of the road here like this with a bit of gray tone and then smudge it out. Now you can use your fingertip or a piece of cleansing tissue like this. Just stretch it out a little bit so that you get a soft blended edge. There's something else you can use too and that's one of these large paper stumps. See how it picks up the tone and distributes it out there so that it gets a soft blended edge to it. Well then too, you know, uh, we're going to have our light come in from the right down this direction. So this slope should catch a little tone like this because it turns away from the light so you'd give it a slight overcast. Now let's erase the line of the hill in the house here so that we seem to plant that house right down into the snow. And since the snow uh, uh, piles up around the house like this, let's bring a little bit up to that edge perhaps a little higher along here, too. With light coming from the right, we'd shade on the underside of this eave and on the underside of that eave. And then we'd get a little shading on the left side of the roof here. Shade the left side of the building. And now let's put a little texture on the end of the house. That clabbered effect. Yes, you can suggest some windows and doors. Let's put in a few windows up here, too, and a still darker accent under the eave, like that. Let's put in some boards along that direction, a door and a window, and I guess we might as well put a chimney on here. You know, that chimney is a small cube form that sits right on the top of the roof. A little accent under the eave here will help bring out more third dimension to that roof, too. Now, over along this edge, let's put in a hedge. Let's draw a soft, irregular line like that, and then another one right beside it. Wave that line a little bit. And right below it, bring a line down like this and along the base. Now that is the dark part of the hedge, and the whole top of it is snow-capped. In order to give that some roundness, let's blend and soften this top edge so that we get the feeling of thickness to that snow-capped hedge. Just like that. Now right behind the hill here, just put in those ragged strokes, always remembering that a pine tree is a rough cone form, and the branches form an irregular, uh, sort of a shaggy effect. And over here, let's put in some snow-covered pine trees, like this. Great chunks piling one on top of the other. Pick out the line that goes through them, the line of the hill. Put some shading on the left side of each form. Then cast a shadow to the left. 
Now, if these have snow on them, I guess these ought to have snow too. Now, see how you can put some snow uh, sort of topping on the tips of these trees? Just like that. Well, up here in the foreground, I'd like to draw a mailbox. Because, you know those <clears throat> country scenes are a lot more charming when they've got a little touch of nostalgia like a mailbox. Now, think of that mailbox as being a cube-like form. Carry your line over here and bring this end up. Now, instead of being flat on top, an old country mailbox rounds off like a loaf of bread. Let's round off this end of it, too. And start the line across the top like this. But let's snow cap that also to give this mailbox a real bit of snow topping. And uh, incidentally, before we put in this post, I'd like to put in some long cast shadows. And uh, the way to put those in is to think of this slope as coming down at an angle like this. You know, the kind of slope that we kids always like to sled on. Now carry it across the road, over these bumps, down into the little ridges, and on up. And let's assume that there is a tree back there that's also casting a shadow. Make that stroke come right on down the slope, into the road, Go over the ridges and drop down into the ruts. So you round those off a bit because the shadow wouldn't stretch straight across. Bring it up this slope and make it climb right over that uh, hedge. Now let's add another branch casting a shadow here and going up over, even a third branch. And here's something to do to these tracks. Now where the shadow crosses, it should go considerably darker in there give our mailbox a post to stand on. So bring a line down from here and another one right beside it like that. We'll erase this tone in a moment. And now let's erase a little highlight down within the right hand side of this post. That post, you know, is a cylinder form. So you shade it down the left like this to really make it round out. Remember our lights coming from the other upper right. Now let's cast a little shadow underneath the mailbox, curve that shadow down like this. And of course, you can put in some wood grain and a little texture of bark and so forth. Yes, I guess we ought to add a little thickness to the base of this mailbox. And then, uh, with our light coming from the upper right, we'd really shade this left side pretty dark, like this. Now let's get some overall tone on the front of the box here. <clears throat> Just put your pencil or crayon on the side and work it back and forth like that. Bring it pretty close up to the top, right tight up to the edge of the snow, like this. Down to the platform, like that. And now let's uh, round out this little spot of snow on here to really give it some of that thickness. Once you've done that, put a little thick cast shadow right under this edge. You see how that makes it stand out? Oh yes, we don't want to forget about that flag on the mailbox. Let's put the flag there because you know when you've left something for the postman, you stick that flag up. And that's the signal for him to pick up the mail you've left. Well, I guess we better put in uh, some sky tone up here. Uh, but by the way, you know, uh, I bet a lot of you folks recall what a thrill it was when uh, you watch the old mailman come by and leave something. It was always a thrill to run down there and find surprises in the box. Now let's make the footprints go back and get tinier as they go back. Yes, by the way, we ought to make little dark holes right down in the centers of those footprints. That really makes them deeper. Yes, we ought to finish the tone of the sky here. And by the way, uh, don't you think things have changed a bit since some of us were kids? Yes, it used to be that the mailbox was the chief point of contact. You know, nowadays, a lot of these folks have television. Well, that's about all we have time for, so let's put the frame.